Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is good to see you guys as usual. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but I knew I needed to get all my information wrote down and just I wanted to get this video right for you guys. But <clears throat> there's no perfect way to do this video. So um, I figured why not just do it and just go ahead and talk to you guys about it because it's so important. And I want to get this out there because if I could help someone that is going through this and that might have this, I I could help someone or it, or someone that just is going through a lot, someone that has depression, someone that has anxiety. This video, we are going to be talking about depression. We are going to be talking about anxiety. We are going to be talking about BPD, borderline personality disorder. Um, bipolar disorder, just all of those things, um, and trigger warning, we will be talking about, um, suicide, um, I'll have to cut that word out, because I know YouTube does not want people saying that word, we will be talking about self um, all of those things, so trigger warning if you are very triggered by those things. So let's go ahead and get right into this video because I've been meaning to talk to you guys forever about this and I just didn't know how to do the perfect video but there's no perfect way like I said so let's just go ahead and get right into it and yeah so. So, this is apple juice, by the way. My whole little juice box. I just squirt it in here. Anyways, so, my last hospital stay, um, which was about a month and a half ago, I got diagnosed with BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder. Um, and I also, it was Borderline, borderline Personality Disorder mixed with a little bit of bipolar because um i'll go over the symptoms of borderline personality disorder but also i was having symptoms of a little bit of uh bipolar because throughout the day my mood changes and changes i will be in a good mood bad mood good mood bad mood like it just switches up all day long and there's nothing i can do to control that um <clears throat> So a lot of people could have BPD and not even know it. Um, it there's a lot of symptoms. Um, you don't have to have all of them, but I think you have to have like I forgot. There's a certain amount to be diagnosed, um, and I had basically all of them besides a few that I will go over. I'll go over all the symptoms, of course. And if you have any of these, please reach out to a therapist. Please reach out to a psychiatrist. Sadly, there is no cure, no magic medicine for BPD. There are medications to kind of help with it, but there's no magic medicine for it. it so that sucks. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's hard and... I was like so excited to get the diagnosis because I was like, oh, when I get the diagnosis, we can work on it and we could like get rid of it. No, that's not how it goes. Um, you have to basically go to a therapy to retrain your brain to not think the way that you think because my brain is very, basically very toxic. My, my brain, the way that it is right now, is extremely toxic and that's just how I deal with things in a toxic way and so I'm having to retrain my brain I need to go to a certain kind of therapy it's called it's a different kind of therapy I will let you guys know in the video of course just popping back in here so the therapies are called <clears throat> cognitive behavioral therapy <clears throat> anger management of course um 
dialectical behavioral therapy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, psychotherapy. Um, and there's a few other. It's a lot of therapy. It's a lot of therapy to get help with this. Um, so there's a lot of different kinds of therapy to go with it. So, yeah, that's what I am going to have to do. Um, I want to get all of my things right to help anyone. Um, and in the description below, the suicide hotline will be down below. Anything, any resources that I want to help you guys out with. So, anyways, let's get into symptoms. And also, the reason why I haven't been posting a YouTube video, like I haven't posted a YouTube video in a while, is because of mental health. It's really hard to post a video when you're not up to it. Like, I don't want to post a video and pretend that I'm happy when I'm not. You know, it's hard. Um, so, yeah. My mood will change and change and change throughout the day. So, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I want to do a video. And then in the middle of the video, I want to stop. But I'm trying to do this and, you know, do this for you guys. Because I need to get a video up. And I want to help you guys. And I've missed you all. Um, I will definitely do an update. But this video is strictly about mental health <clears throat> okay the first symptom of bpd is an intense fear of abandonment even going to the extremes extreme measures to keep people from leaving you like so i have an intense intense fear of abandonment i am terrified to be alone i refuse to be alone um i still sleep with my mom um and it went, it goes as far to, I will date someone, um, the last relationship I was in, I dated that person because I was tired of being alone. I didn't want to be alone anymore. So I dated someone, which is not the thing to do. I will tell you that it's not the thing to do. Um, especially, you know, you gotta get to know someone before you just randomly start dating them, you know, and I didn't have feelings for that person. I just, I just didn't want to be alone anymore. And it's, it's sad, but it's true. So that's a big, big symptom. Um, I know in my last relationship, like the serious relationship I was in for three years, I was terrified of that person leaving me. I was terrified that when they left the house, they weren't going to come back. So Whenever they would leave, I would freak out and have like panic attacks and all of those things because I was always scared that they were not going to come back. And I do realize now that that was not normal. And that's why I'm trying to fix everything that is wrong with my brain and the way it thinks. So, you know, it's, it's hard to realize and admit when you're wrong, when you're in the wrong and when you messed up of course that relationship was toxic on both sides but you know i i have to admit that like i definitely played into it because of my, the bpd and i didn't even know that i had it at the time so that's extremely hard to deal with um a pattern of unstable relationships such as idolizing someone and basically you have a favorite person so, I want to talk about that a little bit too. So, when I was in my relationship, you know, the one that I was in for so long, that person became my favorite person. And if you have BPD, you know what that means. If you, you literally have, it's called a favorite person. And you just are obsessed with this person. You idolize this person. You're in love with this person, you're terrified that this person is going to leave. It could be a best friend, it could be a boyfriend, a girlfriend, um, <clears throat> a family member, anyone. You just do not want this person to leave you. You're terrified that they're going to leave you. And for me, it was my significant other that I was with for um, years. I just got used to that person and I was terrified of what it would be like without them. So once it ended and I was without them I didn't know what to do with my life I was I was terrified I you know it was hard and you know it it took a long time to get used to the fact that we were over and um that 
things were never going to be the same. And yeah, so I'm still trying to recover from everything that went on and the toxicity from that and um, being so attached to someone. It was, it was so horrible. You know, it's horrible to be so attached to someone and then they just like poof, like gone, you know, they're just gone one day, you know, and I wish that person the best. Like I like the drama, like there was so much drama and it was all because, um, you know, I didn't want to let go and also other reasons, of course, I'm not even going to get into that. That's so stupid and pointless. I have grown so much in the past few months. I've realized myself, I realized that it's so pointless and stupid to argue with people and have drama with people. You know, it's just stupid. And I'm a grown ass adult. I'm 20. I'll be 21 soon. So, um, I do know that, you know, I need to grow up. And another s symptom of BPD is acting younger than you really are. You don't act your age. You're kind of a little bit immature. <clears throat> like I said, admitting these things were the hardest part for me, but now that I can admit it, I can fix it. So yes, I can admit that I was extremely immature and that I had issues. And I'm glad that I'm able to fix these things now and with my therapist and all of that. So yeah, a pattern of unstable relationships. All of my relationships from the past were very unstable. They were very toxic. Um, just extremely toxic and abusive and just not good, not good relationships, not a relationship that anyone would ever want. So yeah, it, things needed to change with, um, the way that I view it and I need to be okay with them leaving and be okay. You know, like I would get anxious just if they would go to see their family, go to see their friends, you know, that weren't even girls, you know, just I would get anxious over anything because I'm like, oh my God, they're not going to come back. So I would, I like, honestly, I would want them to like leave something at my house. That way I knew they have to come back to get this, you know? So it's just a really weird feeling and it's just a lot of anxiety and stuff. Um, so another thing is rapid changes in self-identity and self-image and intense jealousy and insecurity. So I have been extremely extremely insecure in the past um and I still am insecure I'm learning how to love myself it's really 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 hard when for the longest time and social media has made it even worse where I go online and I see these beautiful beautiful girls and I just want to look like them I just don't want to look like myself I want to look like them because they have like these perfect bodies and we have these unrealistic beauty standards and I, I can, sh I'm sure that any girl can relate to that. Um, it's hard with social media, but yeah, I get extremely insecure and, um, here lately, like when I got out of the hospital, I was on steroids and everyone kept telling me, oh my gosh, you've gained weight. Your face has, um, gotten puffy, like blah, blah, blah. And, um, that made me extremely insecure and it literally made me want to stop eating. People don't realize just because someone is small, you can't just be like, oh, you've gained weight. That's extremely rude to point out anyone's weight. It doesn't matter if you're telling them they're too skinny or they're too big, whatever. It is totally inappropriate to point out someone's body anytime and it's just rude. And, um, I would cry and, and people don't realize that's what causes EDs. That is what causes it. Um, stuff. Comments like that. <clears throat> and it really did make me to where I didn't want to eat. So I did start trying to like skip meals and stuff like that. But now I'm like, you know what, whatever. I'm going to eat. I'm going to, I'm going to be okay with myself because that's what I need to do is be okay with myself and learn to love myself because in the end, that's all you have is yourself. And of course I love my family and everything, but you know, um, shifting goals and seeing yourself as bad or as you don't even exist at all. Um, I do shift my goals a lot. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do 
nursing. I've always wanted to do nursing school. And then now I'm like, I want to do cosmetology school. It's really hard. And I don't know which one. I think I'm going to go into cosmetology school for now. And if I want to later on, I'll do nursing. I, I have plenty of time. Um, yeah. So another thing is major anxiety. So, of course, I do. I have major, major anxiety. Um, I am on anxiety medication. Um, it's a fast-acting one. And um, they are fast-acting anxiety medications um, like benzos. They are extremely addictive. So please be careful if you ever start taking them. Um, I know that they took over my life um, for a while <clears throat> when I had to learn how to just take them like when I need them you know and um, you know I struggled with that and then I struggled with my doctors like they were the ones that put me on it and then being like oh no can't take it anymore we don't want you to be dependent on it I'm already dependent on it I can't function without my medication I am on um, Lamictal for the BPD and bipolar and all of that and depression. Um, and I'm on Klonopin for anxiety and I'm on Seroquel for sleep. Um, the Lamictal is a mood stabilizer basically. And um, ever since I started it, I haven't had these suicidal thoughts, which is good. Um, but it's still, it's still hard. It did, it's not like it just my depression I didn't there's still days where I have to force myself to get out of bed so it's hard and it did the lamictal made my anxiety worse so my depression medicine and BPD medicine whatever made my anxiety worse so that was that was hard um, major depression that's another thing of course before I got on the lamictal I ha was having major major depression um, I was to the point where I didn't want to be alive anymore. I told my doctors that I, I didn't, I was done. I was to my breaking point to the end. I didn't even want to be here anymore. I was done. So that's when I got on Lamictal and luckily it's helped me. So I'm glad that I found something, but I just hope in the future that I can find something even better that can just help me feel normal and I just I hate the depression is the worst part and of course the anxiety the anxiety and depression are the worst parts and it's horrible it's horrible guys you know if you have depression you know comment down below because uh, I promise I got you know I know when you're to the point where you feel like oh my gosh it's never gonna get better I know that feeling I do um manic episodes where you can just feel so happy or like you're on top of the world and just go spend so much money and just go do whatever you want like it's just a weird feeling you're just you'll just do whatever you know you're just like okay whatever I'll do whatever you know I don't even know how to explain it look up manic if you're curious but it's kind of just like you're on top of the world. You can do anything you want, you know? Um, super impulsive, <clears throat> which impulsive, I look up impulsive in the dictionary. It says Alex, okay? I'm the most impulsive person that I know. Um, I do the most impulsive things, and then once I do it, I will cry about it for about a week or two and be like, why did I do that? I, I hate it. Like, why did I hate myself? Like, why did I do that? stupid um <clears throat> um risky behavior unsafe sexual activity reckless driving um drug use spending sprees um sabotaging anything good in your life all of those things i have done and it's extremely hard like i said if you are dealing with any of those things Feel free to message me on my Instagram, comment down below, please. It feels good when I know that I'm not alone. It really does. I love to know that I'm not alone. Um, feeling emptiness and su suicidal thoughts, of course, like I said. It's horrible. And then intense anger. anger. Um, 
I, when I was young, um, I, when I was young, I used to have such bad anger issues. Like, um, if I was told no, I would freak the fuck out, like freak out. It was bad. It was horrible. I, oh my gosh. Like, I just know that I would scream and cry and scream and cry. And I was little, but I literally went on, like, in my room and would, like, climb on top of the dressers and, um, like, knock all of the pictures off the wall and just do crazy things because I was so angry. And, yeah, when I was younger, I hated being told no. And I just had really bad anger, bad anger issues. Even, even if nothing happened, I would just get really angry and... I would, I would scream and that followed me up till now and I, I control my anger better but oh my goodness like I would have anger issues I would fight with my mom my grandparents it was horrible and like I would fight with the people who did the most for me who loved me the most and I feel horrible for doing it and in, in impulsive things another thing um, when I was um, 16 years old I ran away um, for a little bit for about a week, I ran away, and my family had no clue where I was, and I just did it just to do it, just to be a freaking brat, like, I was, oh gosh, I was a terror as a kid, I hope that my kid in the future is nothing like I was, but, yeah, so, I'm glad that I was diagnosed, and all of that, I told you what medications I take, um, but everyone's different, everyone has, um, different, you know, things. I also have ADD, um, and kind of like ADHD. I can't sit still for a while. As you can tell, I'm already ready to get up. Um, but I needed to film this video, but yeah, I, um, those are my symptoms. Um, and there are also symptoms that I don't have. Paranoia, I don't have that symptom, um, like where you are seeing things and hearing things that aren't there. I do in the middle of the night, I do wake up sometimes, I have sleep paralysis and I'll wake up and I will hear like the door knob wiggling and I'll see it, but it's not even real. I'll see things like standing over the bed, that's terrifying, but that's only in the middle of the night when I'm like half asleep. Uh, but yeah, so those are the things that I go through. If any of you guys go through things like that, please, please, please feel free to message me anytime or comment down below and let me know what you're going through. And if these symptoms, if you relate to a lot of these, please go see a therapist because you need, you need to get diagnosed and you, hopefully you don't even need medication. I hate medication. I hate, um, I hate that I ever got on, um, psych medications. I wish that I never had to, but it got to the point where I needed to because my life was in danger. So, you know, it's scary when you are scared of yourself. That is probably the most scariest feeling is when you are afraid of yourself. I just hope this video helped someone in some way. And if it did, please let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, I love you guys so much. And I will see you in the next video. If you um, ha don't see me for a while, it's because I I don't post that much. I'm going to try and get back on a schedule and post more. Give me some YouTube ideas. Give me some video ideas. Um, but go follow my TikTok if you want to see more of me. I post on TikTok almost every day. Sometimes I take breaks, but I post on TikTok almost every day. But yeah, I love you guys so much, and thanks for watching. Bye!